Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, today's video is going to be seven of my most favorite ways to use up background pieces. Now, this can be a whole range of things from acrylic uh, paints, this might be gel prints that you've pulled, it might be ink that you've made, it might be, be um, ink blending backgrounds that you've done, it might be patterned paper, it might be, um, I don't know, it could be anything at all. But I am going to have a little bit of fun, because this is part of it, <laughs> creating some of those sort of wild backgrounds today, that when you look at as a whole, you're a little bit like, that's overwhelming, I'm not quite sure where to go with that. Um, and so we are going to break down lots of different ways today that you are able to turn these into gorgeous, gorgeous cards. And we're going to have a lot of cards today, and then I'm also going to show you some more sneaky ideas as well, just because I can't help myself. So first up, I'm actually just using some Simon Hurley reinkers. I pulled out two of my largest acrylic blocks. The largest one here is thanks to a friend of mine, Jocelyn, thank you. She sent this to me, I don't know, maybe one, two years ago maybe, and it is one of my most used acrylic blocks. It is beautiful and big. I am just going to put in this um, scrapbook.com mat here because this is going to A, protect my work surface, B, this one is massive, I think this is 18 by 24 inches, I could be wrong but it's huge, it's absolutely huge um, and so I love this because it protects a big portion of my work surface, in fact it's actually bigger than my work surface, <laughs> so um, it means that everything is nice and covered. So I am not even using watercolour paper today. This is my plain old white cardstock. This is the Frenchville brand that I get from Spotlight here in New Zealand. This feels similar to the Nina Solar White, I would say. It performs very similar with ink blending, with alcohol markers, with stamping, all the good things. Um, but for me to get it here in New Zealand, it's a fraction of the price. So I absolutely love it. I can buy it in big reams. Um, but these projects that I'm doing today, they are really just splot the color on <laughs> just splash it down see what you get you'll see that I get some mud you'll see that I get some not so attractive pieces you'll see that I get some cool patterns we get a lot of colors mixing all the good things but I truly am just having fun not thinking about it too much just laying down some color and this is a to achieve the backgrounds for this video but B, this is just something that I really enjoy. It's part of the process for me, getting some, uh, just having some fun, seeing how colors react together. Look how fast that mud was created between the, uh, the green and the yellow, and it's just that purple dye traveling on over and muddying things up. So that is just how it, how it happens when you take the acrylic block off. I am absolutely soaking my paper first in water with a sprayer. I'm going to get all sorts here. So if I don't like something, I dab it up a little bit. You can see I can just intervene. There's no rules, there's no reasons that say that you can't touch anything once it's come out. You should just leave it. Otherwise, I can take the reinkers like this and just drop them straight on. You can see some of the colors move absolutely I mean, they almost look like alcohol inks to me, but I don't know why that is. It's just something to do with the color and something to do with the makeup of that color. But let's rewind for a second and see how this video even came about. <laughs> So this is a video that I did previously, which you will have seen by now, and this is where I did a similar technique, except for I was creating sort of purposeful blobs or shapes, and again, I put the inks out on an acrylic block, these are the blobs that we ended up getting from those, well, it's some of them, I did a lot, let's be honest, and then these are the cards that came from them, but then I had that ink left over on the acrylic blocks, and I was like, well, I'm not going to waste this beautiful ink, so I filmed this part of it, and was going to just pop it in that video, and then I was like, ah, how gorgeous is that, I have ideas coming from this. So that's where my idea came to create this video because often we will do our backgrounds like this. I wasn't planning to, I really just wanted to use up the leftover ink. This one, I'm just going to splat it again and see if there's much more color left on there. There's still heaps of ink and we still get a gorgeous but crazy pattern. And so, uh, you know, backgrounds come about like this all the time where we're just 
playing or we're on a roll or we're just having plain old fun and we do need to find ways to be able to use them. Now some of these you can see are a little more desirable than others. All of them have ink on the back. I was just having fun, happy, messy playtime essentially. Um, this one here, I ruined this by accidentally um, putting it in a space that was too tight and I ripped it and then these are the larger ones that I did a couple from today and then a couple from the other day when I did that first video but let's turn these into some cards and show you some techniques now this video is a bit longer for me but I don't I'm not a big fan of doing two part videos I'd rather just pop it all in one you can come back to watching it if you need to split it into two um, and I just wanted to give you all these lovely ideas they're all simple they're all beautiful they all create gorgeous cards but first and foremost with a big beautiful bold colored background we can go plain and simple with our sentiment. A big gorgeous sentiment die like this one here, the happy birthday to you from Lawn Fawn. You can just cut this out. I have cut it out several times and then I am also going to um, use choose one side of this gorgeous color because it's sort of a bluesy side and an orangey side. I am going to take the framed rectangles from Motor Scrap and this is just going to be a little bit of a decorative rectangle. We are going to make a really plain and simple card. This is kind of a go-to. I almost forgot the card, but I can whip one up in no time, actual no time. <laughs> and especially if you've got all of these backgrounds already made, then 15, 20 minutes maximum, 15 minutes I would say, you could have this one knocked out of the park and gorgeous. So I did cut out three of these big bold sentiments and I did put some double-sided adhesive on the back of them you can absolutely go ahead and use some liquid glue that's going to work beautifully too I pop up this frame on some foam tape because I really want it to stick off the background and that way the holes around the outside stick out even more I love it here I'm able to pick off stick that uh, double-sided adhesive which makes again really easy there's a couple of little spots that I missed <laughs> with the adhesive so just add a little bit of glue and then from here it's very very simple because if you add some little gems some little diamantes some little um, enamel dots some little sparkles of some description then this is going to finish off the card beautifully so I just spread some here there and everywhere around the card and this is pretty simple you absolutely don't have to have this sentiment but a big bold white sentiment on a colorful background is going to look really stunning with very minimal effort and it's a great way to use big bold colorful backgrounds so that's number one number two we've got this next piece here and for these these are all full-size sheets of cardstock so that's mainly why I'm cutting them down in half it means I can get double the fun from one sheet of cardstock and again I'm going to go with this sort of orangey yellowy there's a little bit of green a little bit of pink in there <laughs> And this one is background dies. Now background dies in general are, because they're obviously so big, they can often be fairly expensive. So two things. One, I have a very limited range. I think I have two, maybe three background dies. That's it. That's it. all I have in my stash. They are expensive. And when I choose to get one, then I know I want to use it in lots of different ways. So that leads me to number two. We want to get the most use out of background dies that we possibly can when we choose to invest in one. So I'm going to do two layers of the background today again I do have some of the stick it double-sided adhesive I also really like the Sizzix double-sided adhesive sheets these both die cut beautifully and are going to be able to just pop these two together and then again do the same thing I'm able to take this off take the backing off and pop it onto our background Basically, in the last couple of techniques, I am pointing out that over a really busy background, you can put anything plain white cardstock, even some leafy die cuts. I was really tempted to show you that when I had them all die cut ready to go. Um, some leafy die cuts in just plain white or plain gold or plain silver, and they would look absolutely stunning over top of this. So you don't have to go complicated when there's already a busy background going on. Now, for the sentiment, this is the Oversized Hugs Print Die by Waffle Flower. I suspect this is maybe discontinued. I'm not sure. I know that there's a scripty one that I can also link down below. And I had done these with a little a scrunched paper technique. And since they were already made, which makes life really, really easy, I'm going to take a little something else that's pre-made. And this is the Paper Rose 
black and white sentiment set and just cut one of those out. This says thinking of you. I'm going to put this down. I've already got dimension behind the um, background die. So I'm just going to put this nice hugs one down flat and then a little bit of dimension, a little bit of phone tape behind the thinking of you and pop that down as a little sub sentiment. Now I absolutely could have stopped there, <laughs> but just to go a little bit further for a little bit of fun, I am going to use some gorgeous little um, water droplets and I'm going to put them on the intersecting points of that background die there just using some liquid glue and inside that liquid glue bottle is the Ranger Multimedium in the matte finish. It's beautiful, very, very strong glue and I just pop it into these little squeezy glue bottles to make life easy for myself but I just put them at each corner and it's a little bit hard to see but these really do add something. They just add that little bit of extra detail when someone is looking at the card. So on to the next one. The next one that I have for you I'm going to use this blue side of um, the last card that we used and for this card I'm going to use a four and a quarter by five and a half, half inch top folding card and the reason that we're going to do a top folding card is because I want to emboss the entire front of it and that's going to work better rather than a side fold because I have just the regular big shot machine and it's not going to go through if I put it sideways so if I put it this way I can uh, make it all work really well. So this is the diamond droplets and this provides a gorgeous little bit of texture in the background just nice and white run that through our um, big shot and it looks stunning. Now this piece here we are actually just going to use a strip of this so sometimes less is more and that's the next technique I want to show you sometimes just having a strip of it or a hint of it is going to be the perfect amount for your project. So I am sort of picking out the best parts of this obviously I knew that would always happen even when I was creating the backgrounds you want to pick out certain parts but I really do uh, like what we've got there. Now orange and blue are going to be kind of contrasting colors so I went with this gorgeous giraffe. Here's from the Crafters Companion Reach for the Sky stamp set. I don't think I can find this little stamp set anymore but I had this guy pre-colored and sitting in the back of my stamp set so great time to use him but any little creature or animal or a person or little something to go on the front there would be super duper cute. I have the Happy Dirth, uh, Birthday Dude sorry, from the Simply Wild About You which is another one from the like a different one from that same um, collection of stamps and that one was the pandas I think but anyhow I have some silver mirror card stock and I'm just going to lay it down on there with some uh, adhesive just some uh, no dimension to it at all I want it to lay nice and flat on that silver and the silver is just going to help break it up from the background and actually when I put it on I'm really glad that I did it also adds that one of those little finishing touches to the card which I think makes a big difference now I am going to pop up this gorgeous gorgeous giraffe I think that he just looks really cool actually and I think this would make a great boy's birthday card or something along those lines so uh, it's good to have a few of those in my stash they definitely Definitely go fast the kids birthday cards I don't make too many of them probably that's why they tend to go fast um, because I, I just lean towards other things and I'm not a particularly huge sort of cutesy stamps and cutesy dies sort of person but I do fall for the odd one and definitely include them here and there because I think as I said people do like them and go for them so I'm going to pop up the sentiment as well on some foam tape. I'm using some foam strips. I'm really going through my stash and using up every little thing that I can at the moment. Things that I've been ignoring or pushing to the back of my stash. I want to make sure that I use them. So I've got these little tiny foam strips that I'm using up at the moment. That is card number, I don't know, three. Are we up to three? Next one, we have this gorgeous little rainbow of color here. Now this one actually didn't get too much mud. I think this is from one that I did the very first time around the previous day I didn't do it uh, with this bunch I can't quite remember it doesn't matter but anyhow so moving on to our next technique I really like uh, all of this gorgeous orangey pinky yellow over here and I am going to use these to create this floating card technique or floating element I had done one of these years and years and years ago where we did a floating circle and it's just a really fun simple technique I have a piece of acetate here. I'm going to cut this to about, I think, two and a half-ish 
inches wide. I wasn't too specific on my measurements. And you can see I've cut all of these at sort of an angle, any angles, it doesn't really matter at all. I am going to put double sided tape on the back of all of these. If I had been thinking, I would have, before I cut these into strips, I would have put some double sided adhesive sheets on the back. And that probably would have made my life easier. But I didn't think of that at the time. And then the acetate thing will sort of become a little bit more clear soon. Because I'm just going to move these um, sort of funny shapes down the acetate as we go. And trying to um, go between all the colours. I don't want it to look like it flows on at all. I don't want to make sure like it all looks continuous. But I want to leave a little gap in between each one. And that's where it's going to look like it's floating. Because it's raised up off the background with nothing in between. And this is sort of just a really way of keeping it nice and tidy. Otherwise you could definitely lose the acetate and just do it uh, on your card front. But for me this provides me heaps more control. And that just is is easier for me all round. This is where the floating part comes in. You're going to pop this up on some foam tape and this is going to be raised up of course. These are still the skinny same um, foam strips that I'm using up. I have heaps and heaps of these which I need to use up in my stash. Once you've got it all on, pull off the release pieces and I'm going to use the other side of that top folding. Uh, I created two of them when I made um, the card before. So for this one, I'm going to use up the other top folding card and pop this sort of centered over to the left a little bit. I'm keeping this really, really simple. For some of these um, embellishments and things, I just went into my stash. I found scraps and extras. I looked in the back of stamp sets and dies in case I had some already colored, already done. And in this case, I already had this gorgeous little flower here. I'm going to pop this on an acetate circle that had already been cut out. I'm going to create myself a little stem that I will just sort of pop underneath there and look like I've got this gorgeous little flower all ready to go. And that again, it's going to break up that background. The purple goes nicely with the pinks and the oranges. And even with the vellum circle, I think it sort of um, helps the little focal point stick out enough, but it doesn't detract from the gorgeous floating element that we have created in the background. So this is going to go basically half on, half off, and I just popped it up with a little bit of foam tape on the other side, and then pop a little bit of glue behind there just so it doesn't peek out through the uh, vellum. And then, of course, I have a little from those uh, black and white or the all occasions paper rows, and it says just because, a little sentiment that I will pop on there. And I love that floating element. It looks very, very cool. There's a lot of dimension to those gorgeous strips there. Again, taking some of that gorgeous color that we created with the background. So, of course, there are so many ideas, and I really didn't want to get into stamps today at all. This is mainly for dies and for, um, you know, paper cutters, paper trimmers, and those sorts of things. So, a couple of bonus ideas here. This is one of the Hero Arts Fancy Dies, and what you want to do, it doesn't really matter what shape you have as such, and it certainly doesn't have to be a sort of fancier shape like this, but you can take a gorgeous, big, colorful, bold panel, and you can cut out the majority of it. So for me, I'm going to put this gorgeous big die in the center. I'm going to hold it with a little bit of mint tape and run it through my die cutting machine. And then when it comes out, you'll be able to see that obviously through the center, there is going to be this big, gorgeous, white gaping hole in the middle, but that also helps balance the card for us. So instead of adding a feature on top, we're kind of cutting into it. And I do like this one. I think it's, is it meant to be space? I'm not sure, but this reminds me of a big paint splotch or something like that um, and the little separate paint splotches out the side uh, that it die cuts around it I feel like they could be turned into something but this, <laughs> that's a, no, a whole nother card so I popped this up on some foam tape to give it some good dimension and then I'm going to pop this down onto my four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base I'm not going to finish these next couple of cards because I really want to keep this video down but I just wanted to show you how gorgeous that looks you could even just pop a big beautiful sentiment you could actually have some something, a creature or a little critter or a little uh, flower or a focal point somewhere in the middle there. And then of course, this is kind of a two for one card because that is going to look stunning right in the center. And again, even just a gorgeous sentiment, white heat embossed or stuck on there with a big white gorgeous die cut sentiment is going to look stunning. All these little pieces around the edge, as I said, I feel like that could be turned into something, but that's a whole other
another card. And then from here, I'm going to quickly show you another couple of ideas. This one here is where you are going to cut out something from the center. So I'm using the uh, master layouts. I think this is number two. And I am going to cut out the center of this panel. This is fun because it's really just... Um, making a bigger focal point out of what your background already is without having to have two of the backgrounds. So even though I uh, have cut out of the center of this, of course you could make it into a frame, I'm going to stick this one down onto my card, just using some liquid glue onto my card base. And then I'm actually, I already cut a piece of white cardstock that is just ever so slightly bigger than the rectangle that we die cut out. Um, you absolutely don't need to use the um, master layouts one to cut the first one. It's I just like it because it has stitching and it's the only rectangle that I have that has stitching. You can see the second uh, rectangle there. I've just cut it with my trimmer so it's just a fraction bigger and it's creating just a little bit of separation and a focal point out of that rectangle in the center. Then I'm going to pop that up on some foam tape and pop this in the center and of course you would add your own bits and pieces to it from there. So I know this has been a long video. I will try and link anything and everything down in the description box below, but I know I won't be able to get it all, so I apologize. Here's the cards that we created today. If you'd like to support me, there'll also be a link to the Buy Me A Coffee website down below. But other than that, if you've made it to here, thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Bye.